Congratulations for reaching this far. You have already been equipped with all the tools which are required to write some useful Python programs. In the current video, we shall be visiting the core of game programming. Making games is an entertaining and a very fulfilling way of learning. Let's get started with the basics of game programming in this chapter. So there are some core things which we should be understanding with respect to game programming. Let's see them one by one. How animation works. So before we understand what is animation, we should know what is a frame. Frame is a single image in a sequence of images that if you play in a rapid succession gives the illusion of motion. And this is exactly what is used in animation. So if, as an example, if we see one of the pics here, this is looking like a moving uh, man but if you see in detail which i'll show you in a bit it is just a succession of images which are played in such a way that they give you an illusion of a moving man and these are the images which are used so you can see all these images are used and i go forward and you see that i'm moving from one image to the other and it gives you a view of a motion now i go backward it gives you a view of a backward motion after animation the second thing which we have to understand is something called as a game loop so when you execute a game or a program which has a game you have to have a loop which is continuously forever running unless you quit the game this keeps on running and what happens in this loop is that you would be displaying the sprites you would be updating the sprites, you would be running your game logic, you would be rendering the game logic and all those things. So that is what is being mentioned here. So these are the various things which you shall be doing during the game loop. And this game loop is an infinite loop unless you exit or quit the game. So input handling, game status update, collision detection, game logic, render graphics, display update, frame rate control, and what is this frame rate control? It is the same thing which we discussed just in a bit, FPS, frames per second, which you want to show. That control is also done inside the game loop. User input handling uh, is basically if the user is pressing some buttons, he is pressing joystick, he is pressing the mouse, he is pressing the keyboard buttons, all this thing handled with the help of user input handling. Collision detection. So when you play a game, there are there are some collisions which would happen between objects the sprites which are there in the game they should be walking or they would be doing some animation they may hit a wall they may jump so all those collisions are detected with collision detection we shall see this in a bit physics and mathematics is also very important in the game development for example a bouncing ball when a ball is bouncing it would be going down with some gravity and once it bounces it will go up with some gravity so all these things inertia motion acceleration all those things are done with the help of physics if the two objects collide what shall happen that is dictated by the rules of physics and mathematics is uh, like for example if there is a wave how shall be the wave waveform or ripple effect would be with the help of a sine wave so those kind of concepts will come from mathematics so physics and mathematics is very important in game game programming and last thing is the sound and the music effects which you want to portray in your game in this series we are planning to use pi game so what is a pi game pi game is a library which means that you have to install it before you can use it and this is designed for writing video games Pygame provides functionalities for handling graphics, sound and user input, making it suitable for developing 2D games. This is how you can install Pygame and this is the same step as with any other library. You have to say pip install Pygame. In case of pip3, you have to write pip3 install Pygame. So this is a simple Pygame hello world program which has been written here. We shall see what exactly is happening in this here. So first thing which we do is import the Pygame and import the sys library. So these are the two libraries which we import. We initialize the game. So in it is initializing the game. Then what we are doing is display setup. So basically this specific thing is display setup. Now what we do is we have to have the game loop. So this is the game loop. And as you can see, this while loop is uh, executing till what is met. 
it is while true which means it is forever running it is never stopping because true would always be true which means this is an infinite loop only thing when it exits is when you close the uh, the game from the window close and that's where you would be doing two things if in case the invent type is pygame.quit you want to quit the uh, pi game and you want to exit the program with the help of sys.exit next on the game uh, what you do or the game screen what you do is you can fill the game screen with a white background you are selecting some font and you are writing hello pi game and i would be giving the details of what exactly these parameters mean in a bit next what we are doing is that we are doing screen blit uh, I would tell you what exactly this blitting is used for and what is the meaning of the display flip. Okay, there is a concept called double buffering and that's what is being used in every Pygame game and let's see what does it mean. So buffer is basically a data storage. When you are showing some something on your screen, what you are indicating on the screen is the data. There are some pixels, there are some graphics which you are indicating on the screen. And if you randomly update the things on the screen, you would be seeing some kind of flicker or some kind of non-coherent graphics. So to avoid this non-coherency, what we do is we maintain two buffers. One buffer is called front buffer, which is what you see on the game. Another one is called back buffer. So what we do in double buffering is we use two buffers front and back and front buffer is which is being displays, displayed right now and back buffer is where you will do your updates and in the game loop in the last step of the game loop what you do is you basically flip so that the back buffer becomes the one which is displayed now and you see the updated graphics now so these functions basically do the same thing. So drawing operations are performed on the back buffer. So when you do screen dot blit, that means you are drawing something on the screen and when you flip the buffer. So this function is what you use and this is what you are doing. You are flipping the back and the front buffers to have the change visible on the screen. And what this is helping us in, this is helping us in preventing the flickering and it is helping us in creating a smoother visual experience. To control the frames per second on the game, we saw some time back what is a frame per second and what is animation. We saw a sequence of frames it gives you an animation feeling if in case the frames are running at a very fast speed. Now we have to have these frames per second controlled so that you get a you get a coherent uh, kind of uh, animation experience and this you can do with the help of the clock and the clock tick setting okay this as an example is setting the frame rate to 10 frames per second when we execute the program when i write the program and show you an action you will be understanding it in a better way so the first thing which we have to do is we have to install the pi game so what we have to do is pip3 install pi game and this is already installed for me and the same thing which i see here now i want to write a python code so what i would do is i will create a new file called let's say first or let's say hello world and uh, uh, let me not write it in a uh, let me let me do it in a proper editor because if i write in vi uh, you won't be able to see it properly because it's not so jazzy the command prompt so let me open it in an editor you can use any editor of your preference it can be notepad uh, notepad plus plus or textpad or any any editor which you like so let me open it in an editor so you can open this file in any editor of your preference it can be textpad notepad visual studio code or any editor you like what we shall be doing is we shall be executing the program on the command prompt only for indentation and for seeing the colored uh, text i'm using this editor so it is more readable so let's get started so we start with the import and i have to import the pi game and i have to import the sys library for detecting the program closure and like i said earlier we have to do the init now we have to define the game boundaries and which I say is 800 and 600. 
So what I have done here is I have defined a screen, a height and width, and I have also decided I have also given a caption for this uh, game. So this caption we will see. Now what we what I want to do is I want to load some images. Let me do that. I will do. So this is what I wanted to do. I have created the base setup, uh, the display setup and the initialization. This part was initialization. This is the display setup. Now I have to have the game loop. So let me do that. So this is typically the first block. So if in case there is an exit which is detected. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to exit the program. Now what I want to do is I want to have the background uh, displayed. So what I'll do is the position where I want to show the background and what is the background. So background is this is defined here. I want to show it at 0 0 which means the top left corner I want to show the background. So that's what would happen with this. So we have done the blitting. Now what is the second thing which we have to do? We have to flip the buffer. So how we do it? We do it by. So this is it. This is the base program which is written. Now let us try to run this. I'm in the same folder where this program was written or saved and I would say and this is what I see. So nothing much is happening here. Uh, let's incrementally build it. But right now what is happening is there is a background image which I am showing on the on this uh, uh, the game and the caption which I have given for the game is first game. When I exit this the event for exit is fired and the library is exited gracefully. This is fired and the library is exited gracefully. This is what happens when I close the, the game. Now we will incrementally build it not to a very complex level but just to uh, ex expand our understanding a little bit more. Let's build it little further. So I have a character uh, which is in a PNG. I would just load that uh, character similar to how I loaded the background. Then what I have to do is I have to give the position for the character. So let's say I want to have this character loaded at, at 100, 100. Okay. Uh, what is 100, 100? What is 0, 0? What are coordinate system? I would assume that you are knowing that. If not, I'll give you a refresher in a bit. What is this 100-100 means? Now I have to display the character. So the same thing. And now what I can do is I could have written 100-100 here. But there is a reason why I have written this 100-100 here. Okay. And I'll explain you the reason in a bit. So now you can see that the character is loaded at the 100-100. So this is your coordinate system 0 0 starts here and the first uh, thing which is represented in coordinate system is the x coordinates so it will start with one pixel two pixel three pixel like this from left to right and y would be increasing from zero from this side from in the horizontal line from here zero one two three four five like this it will increase downwards okay and in our program what we have defined is the size being 800 and 600 so if i say let me quickly do one thing let's say i want to show this image at 400 and 300 now you can see that the background is loaded at the center it is loaded here so 400 from here is this much <clears throat> and 300 is this much so that's what this is indicating right now okay so thereby because i want to load the background at the top so that it is represented throughout the screen so that's where i'm loading it at zero zero so now we have represented two things one is the background and another is the character this is being written on the back buffer the moment you do a flip the back buffer becomes the front buffer and is displayed on the screen. Okay, now let's do a basic movement of the character. So for that movement, so till now this was not in use, even though it was defined, it was not used anywhere. Now let's use it instead of this. Let me say, 
I want to use the character pause. Okay, and I would do one thing. What I'll do is so this is a list. So what I want to increase in the list is the x x value. So I'm increasing x by one. So that's what is indicated here. Now if I run this, so I can see that the character is moving from left to right and it is moving at a very very high speed and this speed can be controlled with the help of frames per second. So let's quickly see how the frame per second can be used which we have discussed some time back. So the first thing which you have to do is you have to set up a clock. This is how you set up a clock. And the second thing which is required for controlling the frames per second is the ticks. So I would say 10 and this would adjust the animation speed. Now let's run the same program one more time. And now I see that it is increasing at a slower pace. Okay. And if this image was rotated, if on every um, run, every run of the loop, I was changing the image. Uh, like it is moving the sword or moving the feet then we would have got a feeling of a moving animation we, we shall see that is that, that in a bit but this is this shall help you to get started in your concepts now as an exercise uh, what we have to do as an exercise you do the same program and what you do is you rotate the characters from left to right and the moment it touches the corner it should rotate its direction from right to left so it would persistently so right now what is happening is it is going out of the screen it is nowhere visible so what is the programming exercise is to have the same program but the program should be the character should be inside the scope so it should be inside this uh, uh, the 800 by 600 screen which we have made so if it touches the boundary it should come back so that's what you have to do as exercise Thank you very much.